to be that good at. Um, it's a tough matchup. It is hard to hit that guy with the sword. Yeah, it really is because um, a lot, a lot, a lot of the match for Puffs end comes down to whether Marth is going to do... Well, A, it comes down to bad landings and mixing up your landings. Uh, but also, is Marth going to do early aerial or late aerial? And yeah. that, that that makes all the difference um, in how you approach it. And from the, you obviously know a lot about this matchup from the Puff side. As a former Marth player, I know quite a bit from the Marth side. And what you're looking for from Puff is what type of launches do they use? Do they use short hop in one direction or the other? Do they full hop? Do they tend to double jump before they throw out the aerial? Ooh. And when you can get reads on that, that's pretty smart. Okay, did not refresh his invincibility, not able to get the edge guard. Yeah, Marth, or Puff edge guarding Marth is uh it's a chore. I, I think it's kind of tough, man, because because you don't quite have the the stopping power to send them far enough unless you hit them pretty low, uh, yeah. which requires a bit of a read. Could have absolutely gotten the stock ended at 47. percent Yeah, uh, there's an old PPU video of uh, him showing. I think it was either Dewan or maybe it was Sfat. Whoa, he got a uh, he got sliced. He got cut up. Okay, I guess uh, I'll save that for later. That's, uh, one, that's one of those things where um, perhaps that's, Stango had the read. Puffs like to jump away there and regain their footing. Yeah. Um, get the spacing game going again. And Mars one of the only characters that can reach her while she's trying to do it. Yeah. Other characters can maybe wave dash forward, take a little bit of space, and then have to get warded off again by that strong back air game. The really good zoning from Puff. Both players retreating to their respective platforms. <laughs> just kind of not really... They're, just they're both testing the waters. You know? they, got, they got a lot of give and take going on right now at the... Uh, the space in between these two. So, like as I mentioned, the the mix-up between early and late aerial with uh with Marth. Oh my! And also finding good grabs. That's that's also pretty pretty helpful as well. Um, but dangerous. Yeah. Getting those grabs. It can be it crouched. Can be. Not always good. Uh, well, like grabbing you, for, you, for you, both you find the right spots to do it, and it's not dangerous. Is yeah. the point, right? And um, ooh. Well, that was Fast a... fell, so he, he didn't cover as much space as he could have, but I like the lane that he went for. Like that kind of that swath that he tried to cover. He was so close, the up tilt didn't hit him. <laughs> I bet you if Snango turned that around, it would have hit. I think it was the crouch as well. That, uh, yeah, that def played a part. Def yeah, the low profile definitely had something to do with it. Uh, because if Marth does early aerials, it, it's kind of a big. If he fades in with them, you can actually just shield them and carry him off stage with, uh, with a wall of pain. If he stays yeah. in place, it's a little bit more ambiguous. You kind of have to, like, Really, really space your backer well, or try to come like maybe above him, behind him, but that's kind of tough to get over his forward air. Um, yeah, that up air working out again, but uh, what, costing Stango stock. What I like the way about, oh, excuse me, what I like about the way Stango plays this matchup is he knows that it's hard to punish Puff's landings. Um, she can land in a safe spot, that's what she wants to do. Yeah. He tries to punish ah! the takeoff. He puts himself in a spot where he can guess where Adamus is going to take off for very little risk and often get a nair out of it, or a forward air, or at least some uh, positional pressure. And uh, it's finished. W w oh my! Wow. What I was getting at earlier. Ooh, I like that crouch. Yeah. Uh, is that if Martha's doing late aerials, it's up to Puff to drift in and hit him. Uh, yeah. She can't like. She can't really react to Martha's late aerials in that like if she sees him jump without the aerial and then jumps after him, she's gonna get hit by the late one. It could come at any time. Exactly. Yeah. So she she needs to kind of predict it, see it coming. You have to fight fire with fire sometimes. Yeah, and and, and it, it almost makes her go in. She doesn't really have to, I guess, but yeah, I, I like to hit my opponent. I don't know about you. you know, I, I like it a little too much, you know that. <laughs> yes, in fact. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's something that she can pick up. I'm playing the shield game now. Ah. Yeah, I really like Adam Misk with his back turned. Um, Stango puts himself in a position where you think that maybe your backer is going to hit. He quickly dashes back, and then he does a turnaround side B trying to guess exactly where the aerial is going to go, thinking that Adamus is going to try to keep his space safe. Instead, Adamus stays a little bit farther back. Whoa, out the gates with a rest. Yeah. Si side B, up air, and I'm not sure if that rest was a true combo, but uh, so like what I mentioned earlier, Marth, like, he, he sort of fell into it. Stango wasn't quite ready, and whether he could have had a move out at all in that time is, uh, is kind of ambiguous. Oh, like the, see, like those, la those landings are super important. Um, Auto cancel landings and uh, just sometimes just straight up landing without an aerial and crouching yes. uh, can can really uh, put in a lot of work against Marth. Love, love, love the fact that uh, Adamus did not fade in for that recovery. It's so tempting to always do that against Marth. But, uh, you, you can see Stango looking for these F smashes. He's put out two virtually in the same situation where if Adamus had simply burned a jump to get in, he would have died. And 
if uh, it doesn't work out and he whiffs, he's got the whole stage. He's probably going to take one back air. Maybe he'll opposite tech it. Maybe he'll hit a platform. Not a big deal. Yeah, that's sort of... Uh, it's playing the, pers uh, the, the odds. Ooh. The, the, yeah, the give and take game against, like, Puff... Uh, it, it, it's, it's super obvious, like with with Marth, like you can play it death by a thousand cuts, or you can go for the the real big reads, and and it's 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 risk reward. You know? it's, 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 and I think we can time, we can clearly say, um, Stango's even when he does get a read, <laughs> Mark is in physical pain over here. You need a medic. Um, wow. <laughs> Hat, can't say I've seen that one before. I don't think ever. An up he kill off the off the top? He was pretty high up there, I he guess. He was up there. I, I think I've seen it before, but I didn't think I would see it here in winner's finals against uh, against Adamus. Against a Jigglypuff, yeah. But he say, he's got to put something together, which he just did, because he, he was down. And now he, he's uh, he, he's picked it back up. A great, great tipper. Kind of paying uh, hidden Adamus with, with what he did earlier. It wasn't a true combo, but uh, because of the landing situation that Adamus was in, he was able to get that... Uh, that tipper on the platform. Here's a trick we're seeing from Stango that I think he's really good at. He uses two dash attacks in a row, but don't be fooled, they are not the same move. The first one is to read a wave dash away or a jump away from Adamus. The second one is to try to catch him coming forwards. Same move, two very different situations. And um, either either time when he gets it, he's going to get another forward arrow or an arrow off of it. So, so you're saying it's same, it is the same button that he presses, but one's for landings and one for takeoff? I guess, yeah. I mean, so what I'm thinking is that it was less to do with landing and takeoff, more to do with either reading um, movement away or reading, like, s coming forward. Okay, all right, yeah. I understand. Because it is a, a scooping hitbox. At yep. this percent, it's not going to do much, but at those lower ones, it can really... Uh... Yeah, he was at, like, 30 then, so, you know, he would yeah. get another hit for them. Oh, my. They're really just uh, swinging for the fences. And uh, that was a long drive to deep center field, but uh, able to come back, finally does finish it off. Stangles? Like, I won't say he's been finding all the right F smashes, but he's been finding some pretty decent ones when he needs them. What a spot dodge. Oh. It's something... I, I don't know. I, I haven't played Stangle with Puff in, a, in, in in some time now. I really like... That's a rest. Down air. Against Marth. Clearly. He's fine. But how much how much damage does rest do? It's a lot, right? Yeah, it's, it's a pretty decent amount. I, I honestly couldn't tell you. I would, That's fine. I would wager 20-something. Crouch? Uh, we're going for a getup attack. I don't know. This might come down to crouch rest. It might come down to rest out of shield. It really depends if Stango's what he's trying to find the kill with. And that's what you're looking for as a puff here. But the question is, how do you set up that situation? I honestly, man, I'm just guessing. It's like, does he want to grab or does he want to F smash? It just you take a 50-50 since you're behind, and hopefully you win, right? Yeah. Although that the, the thing is, like, holding down is so good because <laughs> you'll get the the weird bounce. Um, mm -hmm. If you hold down on an F smash, you get under most of his grabs, technically not all the grabs, and you don't get side B up tilted. You'll get down tilted, so what? You even get F smash, you take some percent, you're not dead. He tries to do the game two where he uh, does side B up air rest again, <laughs> I assume. <coughs> Clearly, uh... I mean, it was a good it, start. When you think yeah. about the fact that he was up a whole stock at 0%, and he still ended up losing that game, yeah. um, that's scary. Because then you feel like you need a rest to even be in contention. Yeah, and uh, like that's that's sort of the meta that, that, that Puff lives in against most of the characters now. It's like rest is what makes her either viable or win some of the matchups. Yeah. Um, and this is definitely... This is most likely one of them. A really good Marth, you need to rest the good Marths to win. The you... lesser ones, you can you can make the backers work. I mean, you can War of Attrition many of the characters, but when it comes to the very top tiers, I agree with you. I think you have to take the 50-50s. Well, you try to take them when they're not 50-50s, when but your number is much higher than theirs. Yeah, naturally. But um, I think you have to go for those big wins in order to contest these uh, high-tier characters. So, I was going to mention earlier, I like Dare, because um, it doesn't beat Mars Crouch Cancel, except for, I guess, when it does at the higher percent of the <laughs> and things. But it kind of locks him into place, and, and I find it makes a lot of Mars pretty uncomfortable. Uh, yeah. Because you take the back air, oh my, he's really uh, putting some work in here. Uh, didn't didn't pick up a rest, though, which is kind of unfortunate. Um, but he went for another back air. Bad DI there, this should be it. Nice from Adamus. Retake, reclaims the lead. Uh, is that it locks Marth in place, and that can make him super uncomfortable. You know what, Stango, um, if there's anybody who knows what to do, 
against that dare. It's head. There, there, and you see he SDIs behind it and gets out of there. <laughs> that's the way. He does that to my Fox too. I understand. Uh, I understand. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, no, I agree. It's very good. It does make them uncomfortable. And like, even when you do smash DI behind them, what are you gonna do? You're still at a frame disadvantage, right? I believe so. I mean, you probably miss out on the spikes. As Puffy miss out on the spike stun, uh, depending yeah. on when they get out. But that that tournament winner, drifting in with Puff's tournament winner is just frightening. It, it's really, it's not that good. If you're gonna tournament <laughs> winner, you should just hold back and then use your jumps to get in. Yeah. That's that's pretty much because like her. Her tournament winner back goes almost straight up, mm -hmm. but her tournament winner in is, is almost the same. Like, it's like right it, above the enemy, right? Yes. So there, there is that. Um, and, and and oftentimes crucial edge guard. I'm glad you uh, and getting the reverse hitbox as well. Oftentimes that space where she tournament winners in can be covered it, it is the same space that she tries to take when uh, when she does an, a back air from ledge. They're not ultra different. So if Stango's looking to cover Adam is trying to fight him from ledge, he almost like by extension covers tournament winner drift in. That, that's sort of what I found with the uh, with this character. It's not exactly the same. It's close though. Oh, no rest. Wall of pain. Don't get down here. Oh, my he gets God. the grab. This could be big. Ooh, picks it up. Oh, he still had his jump. One mix up. Rolls okay, he on. Gets dash attack. All right. He really wants the edge guard. I look who goes out there. To okay, gets it back here. Oh, okay, a little, a little nervous, I guess. No, no. He gets forward smashed. DI's away. Adam is looking to take a single game from Stango, keeping himself in the set. Shields the side B. Don't go out there. There was no. There's, there's no. nothing for you there, right? There's nothing the for you here. He, don't, he, don't go, don't he, he committed his weight <laughs> so early. You know what it was? He should have won, but you saw the Sing SD. He was singing his swan song, and it was his last stock of winners. There's I mean, it was SD. just there, it was just a poetic. There was a way back airing Stango back off stage instead of resting I, him. I thought he was um, floating out there so that Stango wouldn't be able to do an early up B and get himself onto the stage easily. You know, he's forced to go low, and then he grabs the edge. And then there's a little mix up, and he gets to reset the situation. Instead, he goes for the kill early. Like st drifting out the way he did, chasing after Stango, it's it's so it, it's virtually not worth it. Um, because like against Marth, you almost want to set up a roadblock where you you stop his jump to ledge, however you can, and then from there you kind of work on his up B mix up. Does he go high or does he go past you onto the stage, rest him, or does he try to kind of scare you off, stall it out? You get up when you go out after him and. He